All right. Well, I think we're gonna we're gonna get started. I know that there's a a lot of other people that had registered for it, and I'm sure they'll they'll join as they're able to. But um, for those of you that are here, uh, we want to say welcome and, and thanks for joining us this morning. Um, I'm Andrew with Nevada, and this is Brandy. Hi. And what we're doing today is we're just going to be going over our Suture Skills Trainer. We're going to kind of be showing you what's in it. Um, how you can use it, the different features on it, showing a couple of different suturing techniques that can be done on it, as well as giving you some of the resources we have outside of this that people can use either with our product or with anything else to practice their suturing and get a little bit better. Uh, especially given the times we're in, it's harder to get into different places, whether that's a school lab or a hospital lab or, or anywhere else to really get those resources that you need to be able to practice suturing. So with a lot of the different things that we do normally to get in front of people, whether that's going to a convention or trade show, local or national, or going out and visiting some of the schools that are local to us, um, with, with all of that being put on hold now for, for the last almost seven months, um, we haven't been able to get in front of people like we normally do. So we are starting to do these webinars probably once a month, just kind of going over our various products, showing people, and then at the end, obviously having a nice Q&A session that people can ask us questions, We'll do our best to answer. Um, I will let you know we are not clinical and medical, so if it comes down to a medical question, that's something that I would have to defer to to somebody that is either a nurse, a doctor, a surgeon, somebody with that credential that could actually answer that. I will also say that when I do the suture demoing today, um, again, I am far from a doctor or any kind of medical person, but I do know how to do some basic suturing, so I will show you that. Brandy will also send out a link um, to a video that we had, and we'll talk about that a little bit more with somebody that is definitely qualified that's a plastic surgeon who used our product and went through various suturing techniques, and we'll, we'll touch on that later on as we go through. So, so yeah, so we'll get going um, throughout it. Just a reminder, if everyone could keep their mics muted. Um, if you do have a question during the meeting, feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Um, that is kind of why we're doing this, to be able to answer questions. Um, you can either do it audio or if you want you can use the chat feature or you can raise your hand and we will try to catch you if we don't catch you right away um, on the chat or the raising of the hand feel free to just unmute and just let us know and that way we'll be able to hopefully get to your question while we're still talking about whatever it was that, that you were um had a question on so to get going um if you don't know vata we make various medical training models We've done stuff from uh, basic IV access, central line care and infusion. We do a lot of stuff in wound care. We do ultrasound. We, we do several other areas. And suturing is an area that we got into a few years ago. And we did that primarily because a lot of the suture pads that we saw out there, while they're very inexpensive, some of them are $20 to $30, the quality of them is, is pretty low, which is OK for some students. But people that are really going to be getting into some kind of specialty or a focus that uses suturing a lot, they need something that is more realistic and that they can do more advanced suturing techniques on that product. So we started working on different materials and figuring out what could be um, an improvement on what was out there. And that's where we came out with our suture skills trainer. Um, so we, it comes in both the 3500, which is the light skin. And you can see the, uh, the light skin here, as well as the, the darker skin here, which is our 3502. And again, Brandy's going to send out an email afterwards with all of this product info in it, um, video links, as well as a discount code that you can use if you are interested in purchasing. So after we had our pad, we also wanted to look at what else would be needed in the product for people to be able to do all the suturing, all the practice they wanted to right out of right out of the box without having to go find other supplies. So we came out with uh, it with sutures. So you have 12 sutures right here. Um, they're gonna be just like they are on a normal suture that you'd get from any other suture supplier. Um, they're non-sterile, so they're gonna be lower cost. We sell the sutures separately. They all get stored right here. As you turn it over, you have a flap to store all of your instruments. So you're gonna have your, um, your forceps here. You have a safety, a safety scalpel. 
you have your needle driver and you have some scissors and these are the scissors that have the little hook on the end there so they're going to be great for actually cutting those sutures out and removing them after you've done your training and on the back side we have our tension device we have a skin stapler and a skin stapler mover and we'll go through each of these items as we kind of go through and demo the product um, also comes obviously with this case so the case can be closed up everything's in there so again whether you're uh, a student like a medical student that wants to be able to practice suturing because you're hoping to get into something with suturing in the future you have all this so you can take it home you can sit down at home and you can practice if you're a school and you want to be able to get your students up and running on suturing you can take this off the shelf put it down on the desk and the students come in everything they need is right there and they can go ahead and start suturing with all of the instruments and all the supplies that they need so let's go ahead and start with our, our skin pad here. So this is our skin pad, it has five different layers in it. So on the top, you're gonna to have your epidermis, then you have a dermis, your fat. You can see in here, the small white layer, that's gonna be fascia, and at the bottom red, that's gonna represent the muscle. Um, as we go ahead and we cut into this in just a little bit here, we'll, we'll show you a close up of those different layers. We also have a graphic that kind of gives a cross section of them on our website. Um, we'll send out a link to that afterwards. And that gives you a really good idea of the different, um, the looks of them, as well as the thickness of each one of those. So once you have your, your pad, the next thing you're gonna wanna be able to do is you're gonna take your tension device. So this is the tension device here. You basically, you just squeeze and that's gonna release it. You can pull it up and it's just a simple hinge with a couple of metal bars here. On the base is a round mound. This is going to put that tension on it, and you can actually vary it by removing this top. That's gonna to give you a smaller mound. That's gonna put less tension when you do your cut or when you're trying to suture it back together. For today, we're gonna to leave this, the, uh, the extra uh, piece on here, which is gonna give a little more tension on the, on the product. So when you're gonna go use it, what you would do is you would place your, your suture pad in the tension device and then you would close it down. So one of the things that we heard on a lot of products were they either are flat pads or they are pads with existing um, <clears throat> voids or cuts in them when you get them, which is good because you do have to bring them together. But nothing's under tension. There's nothing actually pulling those two edges apart. You don't have to approximate them and bring them together. And that's one of the things that a lot of the doctors we talked to said that people were lacking the skill to do and the practice is they needed to actually have to pull something that was pulling apart and bring those edges back together. So that's what the tension device is gonna do. So now that we've got it put together, we'll get all of our instruments out, we'll go into our, our pack and we'll actually we'll pull out our suture. And then we can go ahead and we can actually practice our suturing now. Now, one of the things on ours is that there isn't going to be any of those cuts in it ahead of time. So when you get it, you can do whatever cut you want. So we have sent out products for classes and demos, and we've seen them come back with anything from very small one, two centimeter long cuts. We've seen cuts that are 10 centimeters long. We've seen cuts that are very superficial and you can go deep. You can also do something that's not a linear straight cut. You can do a half moon, you can do a kind of a V-shaped cut, like a flap, and you can do all of those different cuts, whether you're the instructor, you can put those cuts in ahead of time, or you're the user yourself, you can actually go ahead and put in whatever cut you want to practice a different skill, whatever it might be, whether it's a superficial closure, deep closure with the, the fascia involved, or anything in between. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and we will go ahead and start cutting on this. Let me switch the camera. All right, let me just make sure you guys can see. I think you should all be able to see that. Um, so first thing you do, put it in the tension device. Again, when I cut now and I make my incision, what that's gonna do is actually, actually gonna pull that skin apart. So what we'll do is we'll just go in here. And you can see that's gonna be pretty superficial. And as I get down a little bit more, I can do a slightly deeper cut. Now, I'm not gonna go super deep on this one. I will do a deeper cut in just a second. Um, but I definitely wanted to show this. And I'm gonna to try to get it a little bit closer. So hopefully we can see some of the layers in there. So if you can see, 
Um, there is that top layer, which is more of that, um, let me get back here, sorry. Um, that is gonna be more of that epidermis, and down below you're gonna see a slightly lighter color. That's gonna be our dermis, and then down below that, you're gonna see that fat. So that'll be our fat. Now we're wanting to do our, our suturing. You can go ahead, we can open up our suture. pull it out and we're ready to go. One of the things that we again saw and we heard from a lot of people on different suturing products was their longevity of it. So it might be a 20 or $30 or a $50 product, but you're only able to suture it a handful of times before the skin starts to rip. So one of the things we want to do is make sure that you could use this numerous times and get a lot of practice in, because at the end of the day, the only way to get good at suturing is to practice a lot. So we can go ahead and we'll start, we'll go through, And again, this is far from the correct exact technique you would use somebody in a training situation, but I'm just doing this for demoing. So we'll go through both layers of skin. Now that I've got my tail of my suture to where I want it to be, I can go ahead and start doing my knots. So you can see there, I had to put tension on it. I had to bring those edges together, um, which for somebody like me that doesn't know how to suture very well, that can be a little tricky. And I can see at the end here that I have a little bit of a gap. So these are things that you can do it. You can realize what you did incorrect, what you did correct, and then you can practice it over and over. Um, with this one here, one of the things that's nice is the durability. So you can see I'm lifting this up. It's, it's not heavy, but it's definitely not light. It weighs probably around a pound. Um, so as I'm lifting it up, those sutures are going to hold and they're not going to tear through. That's going to allow you to now go in. We can both go in here and cut the sutures like they would be done if it was an actual patient. You can cut those short. I can go ahead and continue to suture more. Here, we'll go ahead and we'll do one more. Go ahead and we pull through now. Now we'll go ahead and do our tie. Do our second, and now we'll do our final, third and final pull through there. And again, now we can see, again, it's gonna hold. If I'm learning um, and I have the ability to have somebody by me that knows what they're doing, that's maybe a, a more established um, person. They're able to give me some feedback. I've now got my two knots in there. I could go ahead and continue. I could finish closing up this wound, this incision, and then I could go ahead and cut all the sutures out and try it all over again. So that's kind of the benefit of this, where you're able to practice over and over and over again, because of so many things in life, repetition is what's gonna get people better. So after you've gone, you're going to go here and cut and again that, that hook is going to be the huge help on this the biggest thing that we have seen is if you aren't really careful as you go ahead um, um, if you're not careful there's a chance that you could actually cut part of the tissue and then it's just cosmetically it's not going to be as good but you're not going to be able to um, use that incision maybe quite as many times okay um, so we'll go ahead and put that hook under there. We'll cut. The sutures can be removed. And uh, we did get a couple people that asked us about changing the camera because my hand was blocking it. And I kind of noticed that. I apologize. So if that's better, if you could let us know, um, that would be great. We know it's kind of coming at a weird angle, but I think you'll be able to see a little bit better now. 
Um, so that's that's a basic suture knot. Um, really easy to do. Um, people can learn that in a matter of a few minutes, and then they can spend 10, 15 minutes practicing. And one of the things that we have, and I'll touch a little bit on it now, is um, we have a video. We had used a plastic surgeon that was out of Duke at the time, and now I think he's in private practice. But he had been one of our main consultants on this, and he actually did a video for us using our suture pad here. And he had gone through, through and shown, uh, I believe it's 10 different suturing techniques. And so Brandy will send out that list here in just a second because I don't want to uh, say them all. But she'll send that out in the chat. And again, we'll include that afterwards. But going through all of those different suturing techniques from something as simple as one I just did, which is a simple suture, we can now go through and we can practice other suturing techniques. So the next one that I'm going to try, and I'll be honest at the front here, this is one that I am not great at. But and I think this is a, a definitely something where our suture pad is a little bit different than some of the other ones out on the market is doing a buried suture. So something that's going to be done into the dermis as opposed to the ep epidermis, generally going to be an absorbable suture where you can't see everything, any, any of the suturing from the surface once you're done. Um, and that's all going to absorb over time with the patient. So this is where we're going to have to get into, um, into that, that dermis layer there that you can see. And so a lot of the pads out there, they don't have the ability to actually suture into that. So we're going to try to go ahead and we'll go, go in. I'll go in over here. Um, so as I'm suturing in these layers here, if you suture into the dermis or epidermis, the sutures will, will hold just like they would on an actual patient. But if I were to go ahead and put any suture in where all I was grabbing was the fat, that suture is going to tear right out. That fat does not have any of the strength to actually hold a suture. And that's going to be the same thing that you would get with a, an actual patient. The fat really doesn't have any of that ability to, to hold um, to hold a suture in or to pull skin back together. So we'll see here if I grabbed my layers correctly. I might have come a little, well, we'll see. So I can go ahead and do So that one there, um, I kind of did it, but again, this is something that I would need more practice on as well. So what's good is being able to do it now that I've done it, I can go ahead and kind of realize a couple of things that I did incorrectly. I can go back and now I can practice it additional times and go ahead and practice it as many times as I need to before until I have it kind of nailed down. So again, I'll go in. Going in on that side. And I'll go down on the opposite side. There, I did a little better on that one.
So again, you can see the first one I did, not as good. The second one, a little bit better. I still definitely need a lot of work on this. And I think that's where this is gonna be so beneficial to various students is they're able to practice a suturing technique like a buried suture, which isn't as straightforward and simple, but it's something that if they're getting into, again, anything where you're gonna suture a lot, this is definitely a suture you're gonna to need to know how to do. So it gives them the ability to practice over and over and over again. Um, again, repetition is the key to learning so many different things. So that's kind of a couple of basic suturing. Again, Randy sent out the list. It's got all the other techniques. I'm not gonna get into showing vertical mattress, horizontal mattress, because we're trying to keep this relatively short. But the last thing I do wanna show as far as suturing goes and the suturing technique is, I definitely wanna to touch on a deeper suture and showing you guys the more layers in the pad. So I'm gonna make a new incision here. Should be a good angle right there. So this one here, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go real deep. Um, on, this, on this one here, you can actually see, or hopefully you can see down into there now, um, you can see the, the yellow, that's all the fat thickness there. At the bottom, you can see the red. And then hopefully you can see the uh, small amount of white down there, and that'd be the fascia. So you're not gonna be able to suture into the muscle, and you're not gonna be able to suture into the, the fat. The sutures are gonna tear through there. But if you do go into the fascia, that's gonna be that third layer that you can suture in. So you can suture into your epidermis, your dermis, and the fascia, and the sutures are gonna hold in all three of those layers. So if you needed to do a deep closure where you can't, it's something large like this, if we just close the top of the skin, um, you're gonna leave a void down below the skin, which you definitely don't want to do. So we're gonna wanna get down in there and we're gonna see. So I'll go ahead. Oops. We got our first side, and we'll go into the other side of the fascia. If you guys know anyone that's really good at suturing, you'll realize how fast they go and how much they must have practiced. I know when I watch some of the doctors and surgeons at some of the shows we go to, when they show us how they can suture, it is it's pretty unbelievable. So on this one here, I'm gonna kind of pull diagonal, or not diagonal, um, parallel with the wound, because that's gonna help me actually get that suture to lock down in there. I'm gonna go ahead and grab it again, do my second, and then I'll do one more for a third. And now you can see how that is down in there. Again, the sutures are gonna hold really, really well. Um, that's what's gonna give you that longevity in this, where it's not gonna, you're gonna be able to use each incision 50 plus times pretty easy, as long as you take care of it and you're not too rough with the model. Um, but again, you can see now how, uh, let's see here, you can see how the skin is, is pulled together there in the center. I would need to obviously go and finish the rest of that wound. And then I would probably need to do a secondary closure at the top, either going into doing something like a buried suture or some other kind of suture in the epidermis. And again, as people learn, they're obviously gonna learn what technique they want to use, whether that's through personal experience or through um, a supervisor or uh, an instructor showing them which, what technique they should use in that situation. So the kind of the last thing we wanna to touch on really on the, the functionality of this um, is gonna be stapling. So again, while this might not be something that everybody is gonna learn how to do, you can definitely practice with it. So with it, with the model, when you buy the whole kit, you get the stapler, it's got 35 staples in here, and then you also get the staple remover. Um, again, as long as you use the product with some care and you're not rough with it, the staples aren't gonna really do any major damage to the skin. Um, they're gonna be able to be put in, removed, and done that over and over again numerous times before there's gonna be any really uh, any noticeable wear on the product. So we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and do a suture or a staple here. 
So again, I'll do it on this more superficial cut that we had up here. But I can go ahead and I can actually go ahead and grab my skin. I can pull it together. Oh. Well, I should have checked. That stapler is actually out of staples. So we'll grab this one. And we'll pull that together. And we'll just go ahead and... We'll go ahead and staple it. I can still walk in it. Okay. Let's do that again. My hand is blocking it again, sorry. So we'll go ahead and we'll bring it together, get it centered up on that. Oops. Let's try that one more time. There we go. So now that I put my staple in, after I kind of had a few errors there, uh, I can go ahead and continue to close this wound up using staples, bringing those edges together, and then closing it up. Um, after where you're done, you're gonna be able to go in with the staple remover, go underneath your staples, and then go ahead and push down, pull them out, and you'll be able to do that over and over again without any real issue. Um, some of the other things on this is everything's replaceable. So if you were to buy the whole kit, you can get the sutures, you can get more of those. So if you don't have a steady supply, I know a lot of places they have extra or expired sutures and that's great. If you want a steady supply of the same thing, you're able to buy the sutures from us by the dozen. Um, all the instruments, if you do happen to lose them, you can purchase those individually as well or you can get a new staple, stapler or staple remover if you want to do that. The big one's going to be the tissue pad. Um, so the tissue pad is also available um, separately, and that's we have a lot of people that have actually purchased the whole kit. And then a year later, they purchase replacement skin pads and maybe sutures as well if they don't have those. Um, really, the pad should last a student easily for a year. And one of the things that we definitely see is a lot of, I think I mentioned at the beginning, a lot of the instructors or the educators, they are actually going through and doing their incisions for the students ahead of time. And some of them then actually remove the scalpel from the kit. What that does is it basically tells the students, here's the three or four different incisions we want you to use. Use these ones, use these ones only. And that way we can get the pad. Maybe we do all of our incisions on half the pad. And then the next term, a different student or the next year even, a different student could either use those same ones or if they've worn too much, do those same three or four incisions on the other side of the pad and get that pad to last potentially up to two years. Um, because as you use it, you can go ahead and we've now, we made our incisions there, pretend these ones are now used up and they're not able to be used anymore. You can just slide the pad down just a little bit, half an inch or so, go ahead and go down. Um, Go ahead and now I've moved it down. Pretend this one here is, is used up. I go down here and I can just make a new incision right there and I've got that. And then you can keep doing that throughout the length of the pad. So you can get 15, 16 incisions over the length of the pad. And you should be able to do as long as you're not doing really long incisions, you should be able to get those two rows of them. So you could get up to 30 or so incisions, maybe even a little bit more, depending again what size incision you're using. So if each incision can be used, you know, up to 50 times and get 30 incisions. Um, you can do a lot of practice suturing. Um, you know, that's what, 1,500 practices in there, which is, which is a lot. That gives you the ability to practice each technique a lot. And again, you can definitely get more than that 50 per um, or less, depending on how gentle you are with it. And again, that's going to be up to the individual user. Um, like I said at the beginning, the pad also comes in the darker skin. Um, that's going to have the same five layers. It's going to have your dermis, epidermis, fat, fascia, and muscle, and then all the same supplies in this one as well. Um, and then we do sell the, the products individually. So we do have some people that maybe they already have instruments they like, or they already have sutures, um, and they will buy just the pad and the tension device um, for their needs. So, um, and then uh, I just had somebody ask me on a flap cut. I won't go through and do too much suturing on it, but I'll definitely um show you making a flap cut on here um, and then if if we wanted to get into that maybe after the q a we can do that i think we had 
tried to cap this at 30, roughly. So I just want to make sure we get time to get to the questions. So if you were to go ahead and wait, I'm going to switch the camera again. I'm going to try to get it down in here. So if you were to do a flat cut, and hopefully I'm doing the kind of cut you want to see. So you can go ahead and go in there and make any kind of a cut you want, whatever shape, whatever depth, like I said at the beginning. Um, that would be one way of doing just a basic flap where now you're going to have to suture on the different ends and you're going to have to bring everything together as well. Um, again, I'll hit on maybe suturing on that. I'm not the best at doing that, I'll be honest, but I can go through suturing that in just a little bit. Um, at this time, we had, we had said we'd keep this to about 30 minutes, so I'm definitely willing to go longer if, if people have more questions and whatnot. But um, if anyone has any questions, we would be willing to answer any of those questions right now to the, to the best of our ability. And feel free to unmute yourself. Um, yes. You can speak or chat either way. I know several of you had questions throughout that we tried to to fit in as Brandy relayed them to me. Okay. Uh, yes, this recording will be available. Um, we're recording it and hopefully that all goes well. Uh, if it doesn't go well, we'll just basically do it again and record it ourselves. But yeah, our plan is to um, download this later today and have it available. We're gonna send it out a link to everybody that was that joined us today. So we'll send out a link both to the recording as well as some more product info, a discount code, and, um, and just general info on, on the product. So if you have questions afterwards, after watching this um, that you have for us, feel free to either shoot them, the email will come from Brandy, shoot your questions back to Brandy. Uh, she'll be happy to answer them for you. And if it's something where you're, um, you want us to go over something specific on a quick video call with you, that is something that we can definitely do for you. Um, video calls, obviously, we're all doing them now, so they're very easy to do. Um, so Randy asks, will we be selling the skin? Right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, the skin is sold separately. Um, so you can buy just, just the skin flap by itself. Uh, I believe it's around $96. I think it was kind of the retail, and we're, we are doing a discount code, which is going to drop that to a little bit below, a uh, little below eighty dollars for everyone that joined today. Um, so you can buy it all by itself. And again, we do have a lot of people that will do that because again, they already have all of their um, instruments and, and supplies that they need for suturing. Size um, so the pad is, uh, it's one size for now. Um, right now, this pad, it's five by eight inches. So it is pretty good size. You're gonna get, again, like I said, anywhere from up to 30 or so incisions. Uh, if you do it correctly, and you're not doing really big ones or you're not doing really wide. If you do a bunch of wide half moons or big flaps, that's gonna eat up a little more. Um, but it does come in just the one size. It does have the five different layers. So again, you've got your epidermis, dermis, uh, fat, fascia, and muscle. And so um, for right now, this is what we have. I will say, um, I actually just forgot, but now I, I'm, that question actually reminded me. Um, we are actually working on some other suture products right now. Um, I don't want to get into too many of them, but I do want to touch on one of them right now because we're working on our second version of it right now and we're hoping to have it available relatively soon. So this is a, it's a face, obviously. Um, so right now we're working on the second version of this face that we got a lot of good feedback on. And this one is going to have the ability to suture everywhere on the entire face is our plan right now. Now that might change. Um, but right now we're planning that any area on the face, whether it's cheekbone, eyebrow, nose, uh, around the lips, all of that can be sutured. We're looking at possibly adding multiple layers right now. It is basically epidermis and muscle. Um, so this one should be available hopefully end of the year. 
and that's something we'll definitely keep people up on. But we do know that there are there are other areas of the body that people want to suture on, especially people that are getting into um, whether it's plastic surgery or dermatology, where they're going to have to be doing cosmetic closures and they want to be able to practice that, or if it's OBGYNs. So we're looking at different suture products related to those, and we're hoping to come out with those as both people tell us that they have a need for them and as we're able to, to kind of get them produced. So again, this one here hopefully will be available um, end of the year. If you do have anything uh, suture related that you are kind of wondering about, whether that's something that um, you haven't seen a model that is for that type of suturing, that would be great to let us know. Um, we're always looking for new ideas. So if, if you think there's a need for a suture elbow, let us know. And that's something that, you know, we can talk to different people out there, find out if there is a need. And if there is, then, you know, that's the kind of thing that we're definitely looking to, to build upon our initial suture product and really have a, a whole family of products out there for whoever it is that they can learn what they need to learn on the right type of, of surface, whether that's flat, whether that's rounded, or whether that's a face. I have a question about the face. Does the face model have important anatomic structures like the facial nerve? So the facial nerve and, and nerves like that is not something that we've looked at yet, but that's something that I can now definitely look at and as we are working with some consultants some doctors and some schools, um, we can definitely look at bringing up those questions because ultimately we wanna give people what they want. And so if facial nerve is something people want and if it's easier, easy enough for us to put it in, that'd be great. Paper thin older people's skin would be helpful. Um, I had not thought about that for suturing. We definitely deal with that on some other areas like wound care and infusion. Um, that is a great idea, and we will definitely keep that in mind. Um, that could be a, another model where it's very, very easy to tear through because obviously, like you're saying, the, the skin with elderly people becomes much different than, than somebody like myself. Um, yeah. Do we have models with lesions where the learner could practice an excision? Um, yes and no. We have some prototypes that we actually um, were working on uh, some time ago. They got kind of shelved because we had other projects pop up, and we're actually looking at starting those back up here in the next, um, well, the next month or so. So no, right now we do not have one, but we are definitely looking to do that. If that's something that you're really interested in, if you could please send an email directly to Brandy um, with your info. Um, we're always looking for people to send models to. Um, the more feedback we can get, the better. So if you're somebody that's interested in it, whether you're an educator or you are a, a end user, a physician, a nurse practitioner, or whatever, um, that would be interested in practicing, we would love to get more feedback. Um, that always helps us kind of refine the, the finished product quicker. So yes, we don't have it yet, but we are working on it. Well, um, if there are no more questions, I think we will we will go ahead and end this. Again, we will. It's recording, so we're going to send out a recording of this to people. So if those of you that showed up late, I know a couple of people asked about it, well, we'll get that out to you. And if you are somebody that wants to maybe share it with somebody else, it's available. And then we'll also send it out to people that weren't able to make it today. Because um, we know we had a lot of people register and people's schedules. Obviously, um, numerous people weren't able to make it. So we will definitely get that out to you. We'll send out a little bit more product info and some links to you, as well as that um, discount code, which I think Brandy actually already sent out the conversation, but this way you'll you'll have it in another, another place as well. So with that, um, we definitely just want to say thank you uh, for joining us today. Uh, this was good for us, and I, I hope you guys learned a little something. Again, I would definitely recommend whether you're going to use our suture product or somebody else's to definitely go out there and find somebody that can help you learn to do it. If you're going to use a video off of YouTube to learn, the one that we have um, is by board certified plastic surgeon. So he is definitely um, qualified. So even if you don't buy our product, please go ahead and um, use that video even with your own suture product or if you're one of those people that is doing an at home 
um, you made your own suture product, definitely use that because it is a great resource. So we're going to sign off. Uh, there's one person here that I think wanted to see the, the flap suture. So if you want to see that as well, I can go ahead and we can suture on it. Um, I will be honest, I am not the best. So if the person that's asking that, if you have any questions, that looks like Randy, if you had any questions specifically, um, feel free to unmute yourself and we, and we can actually talk through it. And I'm happy to show you exactly what you want to see. Hey, this is Randy. Hey, Randy. Hey, I just want to see, you were pulling on the skin earlier when you had it in the holder. So I want to see how it does with the flap, if it just tears through or how strong that tip of the flap will be. So you wanted me to put the, the um, flap into the tension device? Yes, sir. Like just this? see is when you're suturing through the flap, especially the tip, to see okay. if it tears through. Okay, yeah. Uh, Randy, you want to change that camera view? Okay. All right. Is that a good view for you, Randy? Perfect. Okay. So I got my flap set in there. I put it in the tension device. That pulled it apart a little bit. So let's just go ahead and we'll jump right into the um, right into the point of it. So if I go ahead and go in, out. So now that I'm in there and I pulled that a little short, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, and I actually am not positive which suturing technique is appropriate for this. I'm just gonna do a simple suture. Um, block the camera again, sorry people. Um, go ahead and redo that, we do our first, our second. Um, so that is going to be right there on on the tip, and we're going to see, we're going to find out together how this is going to hold. Uh, you can see I'm actually lifting it up right off that area there. So as long as you make your incision correctly on this, um, this the uh, basically the, the netting that is in the skin, the netting that is on that top surface, it is very superficial. It's um, I'm trying to remember. It's like a millimeter or less from the surface. So that's actually going to be, it's very superficial. So as long as you're down into the meat just a little bit, you're going to be fine. And then if you get down into that second layer of netting that's going to be between the uh, epidermis and the dermis, you're definitely going to bite into that, which is going to definitely make it so that any of those sutures you're doing are going to hold really well. You can just lift up the whole product with it. So um, <clears throat> yeah, you shouldn't have any issue. Well, perfect. I think that was the last question that we had. So unless anybody has any final, I'll wait here just for a few seconds. If anybody has any final questions, let us know. If not, again, thanks for joining us. We definitely appreciate it. All righty, I think with that, we will sign off. Again, thanks for joining us. We definitely appreciate you guys taking some time um, to learn a little bit more about one of our products. Hope you all have a great day. And uh, again, if you have any questions, let myself or most likely Brandy know. Take care.